Just before we start, as a way to thank everyone who subscribed to the channel and enjoys the content, I've created a Discord server where you can talk to others and myself all about the world of game dev. We've got roles that you can assign yourself, so you can get role programmer, designer, artist, musician, as well as a help section. Okay, if you need any help for your Unity projects, not to mention we've got a place where you can show off your finished projects, work in progress. Oh, and also memes, because I like memes. A link will be on the screen here, as well as a link in the description to join the server. Thanks, guys. So this tutorial will go over a way to randomly spawn enemies and items and whatever sort of objects that you'd like within your rooms, within the dungeon, okay? So I guess this is sort of like a bonus episode to uh, the procedural dungeon generation series, but I guess I'm just going to go over a couple of simple ways on how you may go about um, actually putting items and stuff within these rooms that we've created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a grid within each room and within that grid that will give us an opportunity to spawn objects at wherever we'd like and I'm only going to show you how to completely randomly spawn um, these objects but uh, we could be spawning them based on waiting so if you spawn maybe I don't know, a wall somewhere, and then there might be a higher chance to have a wall next to it. Or in Pining of Isaac, they have like rocks and, or like a, a gap between floors. So yeah, let's get right into it. So I guess the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my dungeon generation script folder, okay? And I'm gonna create a new script and this is gonna be my grid controller okay now if we open it up the first thing I'm going to want to do is I want to get a reference to the room so this grid controller is going to be a child of our uh, room so just call it room now I'm also going to create a struct and this is going to be our our actual grid okay so uh, within it we can have a public int and we're going to have columns, um, we're going to have rows, okay, and we're also going to have a, uh, a public float, this is going to be our, our vertical offset and our, whoops, our horizontal offset, okay. Now, we actually want to make this system.serializable and that's because we want to be able to change these values in the editor, okay? To do that, we need to create a public grid, okay? And I'm just going to call it grid. So, awesome. And the next thing we need is a tile for our grid. So I'm going to have a game object and this is going to be my grid tile. And lastly, I want to create uh, I want to create a list and store all of the uh, positions in our grid. Okay, so I'm going to call it available points. Oops, available points equals new list of type vector two. Awesome. Now on awake. So if we go forward awake uh, we can just set the room so get component in parent and this is going to be just our room okay oops and I'm going to set the grid columns okay so going across and uh, um, our columns is going to be our room dot width and um, we need some sort of offset. We could create a value in here um, if you wanted to, but I'm just going to say minus two. And this is going to be because not an exact value for the amount of columns and rows that we need. Because um, if you see within, if we go into our, our rooms, so if we go into an empty basement, we're basing it off of this width and height here. So... 
um, and it's actually clipping through and we probably don't want to spawn objects right here so we could spawn objects here instead okay so now we want also our rows to equal to our room dot height minus two okay and we can just change these later now the next thing we want to do is we want to generate a grid so I'm gonna make this public void generate grid the first thing we want to do is we want to adjust this offset um, and that's because within our game we're not always going to be at position 0 and 0 0.82 or it should be 0 and 0 okay um, it's gonna be slightly different so it might be uh, negative 10 on the X okay and we don't want all of our objects spawning in the one room we want it to update our offset based on where the room has been spawned okay so we need to do grid dot vertical offset and we're gonna add our um, room dot get component oops get component transform dot local position dot y okay and we can do the same thing with our horizontal offset okay so horizontal but without x okay now to create this grid we're going to use two for loops so i'm going to go four in y equals zero y is less than our grid dot rows okay y plus plus and when we create um, a new row we need to create a new place so we need to have an x and y position for each of these so I can just go for int x equals 0, x is less than our grid dot columns, x plus plus, okay? Now, we want to actually instantiate our game object. So we can go game object, um, go equals instantiate, and we can just instantiate our grid tile. Um, with a parent of our transform okay now we want to set the position so we can do go dot get component transform okay dot position and we can make this equal to a new vector 2 and now uh, this vector 2 is going to firstly be based off our x okay for the x value so we have x we're gonna minus our grid dot columns and we're gonna subtract our uh, horizontal offset from our columns, okay? Just like that. And similarly for the Y, we're gonna do the same thing. So grid dot rows minus grid dot vertical offset, okay? Awesome. Now, also just so we can have a look at it easier, and um, we can do go dot name, and we can set this to like, I don't know, x, and then we can show our x value, okay? And then we can go y plus our y value. Now, after this, we want to update our available points. So we can add in our go.transform.position. Okay, cool. And um, I guess for now, we'll just leave that as is. If we create a child object, okay, and I'll just call this grid, and we can add a grid controller. Now, our tile, I've actually made a little sprite, it's just a simple border. Okay, so I can create a game object of that, and then I can just 
make it a prefab and then I can drag in my prefab. So if I run that now, it's going to spawn over here and that's because we want to actually update um, our offset. So if we have a look over here, um, what we can do is we can grab all these values and we can actually sort of move it to where we want it. Okay, um, we could actually, if you wanted to, you could add an extra uh, row. So we could do like this and then we'd have enough room for another row. Okay, so I'm actually going to do that. So if we have a look here, we've got negative 8 and negative 8.4 and negative 4.3. So for our horizontal offset, we can have um, probably eight and our vertical offset, we can have four. Now I'm actually going to do my room height minus one instead of two. Um, this will all be dependent on how big you've created your individual rooms. So yeah, so if you have like really big rooms, then they're gonna be different to these values. So that's a little bit better. So see how this is negative 8.5 and negative 4.5. And if we have a look, we got negative 4.5, we got 4.5 and 9.5. So there is a one difference in this. So there we go, that's a bit better. So you should be able to grab Position a tile, your very corner, bottom left tile, where you'd like it. And then you have the offset one different to that. And it should be all right. But uh, play around with the values and I'm sure you'll get it. So we've just gone ahead and created a grid that works fine. Um, in the next part of the uh, mini tutorial, I'm actually gonna go over how we can uh, create a I guess a spawner data so just like how we've created a scriptable object we can create another one and then we can assign that and we can create all different ones for all of the different types of objects that we want to spawn okay and we can pass in some data that's relevant about like how many we want to spawn and these can be different uh, interchangeable per type of room that you'd like to create okay um, so for example, if you had, I don't know, one, if you only wanted one type of enemy in this room and you only wanted maybe between like one and four of them to spawn, then you could do so. But on top of that, they're going to be able to spawn in a random place along this grid. Okay. And without overlapping. If you guys enjoyed the video, uh, please leave a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for the next part of the tutorial specifically. Thanks!